In the last video about my ant simulator, I introduced two main improvements. The addition of obstacles in the environment and a better navigation system for the ants, which helped prevent them from getting stuck as often. Everything worked well as long as the environment remained unchanged. The ants were able to find paths around obstacles and even solve a maze. But what happens if changes are made during the simulation? That's what we'll explore in this new video. First, here are a few minor improvements I've made to the project. It is now possible to control the state of the simulation directly from the interface. I've also added a graph to track the evolution of the collection rate throughout the simulation. On the rendering side, something had been bothering me from the beginning, but I couldn't find a good way to implement it. As it turns out, the ants never had shadows. The solution I finally used was to simply draw a second, slightly offset version of the ants' body. To simulate contact with the ground, the tips of the legs are not affected by this offset. The result is already quite good. But the shadows are completely black, which isn't very realistic. A simple solution would be to make the color transparent. But this unfortunately reveals the rendering's inner workings and completely breaks the effect. To achieve the desired outcome, we'll need to use an intermediate white texture. On this texture, we can draw our shadows in grey without any transparency. We will then apply this texture over the ground using a multiply blend mode. This way, the shadow texture acts as a mask that only darkens the shaded areas. I find the result very satisfying, even though it's entirely faked. Plus, this technique is lightweight enough to have a minimal impact on performance. It can still be disabled in the settings if needed. It's always a pleasure to implement these kinds of features. It makes the development process enjoyable and even addictive. Ideally, this is how learning should always feel. And that's exactly the experience offered by Boot.dev, the sponsor of this video. Their approach is to turn learning to code into a true RPG experience. Programming becomes synonymous with leveling up, completing quests and fighting bosses. This ensures you never get bored as you progress through the lessons, which offer to create real-world projects, which is in my opinion the ultimate way to learn. Whether you want to dive into C, Go or build a little game from scratch using Python, Boot.dev got you covered with their impressive catalogue of courses. There's no risk in trying it out, as they offers a no-questions-asked 30-day refund policy if you're not satisfied. Plus, all courses are free to read and watch, and there is always a demo of the associated interactive experience. A big thanks to Boot.dev for sponsoring the video. By using my code, you'll get a 25% discount on the annual subscription while also supporting the channel. Let's return to our main topic, modifying the environment during the simulation. We'll start by observing what happens when an obstacle is added to an established path. To do this, we'll first give the ants 12 minutes to create their routes under normal conditions. Congratulations to Aliza1 for being the first to bring food back to the colony. The roots then begin to form rapidly. I'm not sure why, but I love watching the ants work. Then, we'll suddenly place a wall in the middle of the map blocking all existing routes. Let's see how the ants handle this abrupt change. As it stands, we can see that the ants linger on their old paths for a significant amount of time.
It ultimately takes them 65 minutes to complete the harvest. The issue is that the deposited markers take a long time to dissipate, which keeps the ants trapped on the now obsolete roots for far too long. This becomes particularly obvious if we watch the time lapse of the markers throughout the simulation. This also explains why they keep gathering where the food was, well after it has been harvested. To improve the ants' responsiveness, I'm going to use the blockage detection mechanism I introduced in the last video. This mechanism allows an ant to pick a new, random destination if it fails to make enough progress within a given time. Now, such an ant will also degrade the markers it encounters along its path. This should help the blocked roots fade away more quickly. Let's run the same simulation again with this new behavior to compare it with the previous version. At first, groups of ants form against the wall, but they quickly retreat as the markers degrade, dispersing within just a few minutes. The harvest is finished in 26 minutes, less than half the time it took previously. The improvement here is truly striking. This also appears to help the ants spread out faster after the food runs out. In the time lapse of the marker view, we can clearly see the blocked ants gradually erasing the old roots. This quickly redirects the flow toward secondary paths, making them a more appealing choice. We now have ants that react better when an obstacle is added, which is great. But what happens when one is removed, potentially opening up better roots? For this second test, We'll follow a similar procedure. We'll let the ants establish their paths for 12 minutes and then we'll breach the wall to create a direct passage between the food source and the colony. Let's see if the ants are able to take advantage of it. Unfortunately, the shortcut is completely ignored. The ants stubbornly stick to their established roots. They are trapped in a local minimum, a suboptimal solution they can't escape. Since not a single ant leaves the established solution, there's no chance for any of them to discover the new passage. To address this issue, I will divide the ants into two categories. On one hand, there will be the followers, which will consistently seek out the most popular path. On the other hand, there will be the explorers, which will take far fewer samples of the trail markers as they move, making them less likely to follow established routes. The challenge now is to find the right balance between the two groups. If there are too many explorers, the trails won't form at all. But if there are too few, we'll be right back where we started. As it turns out, just 10% of explorer ants can make all the difference in this case. In the simulation, we can now see a few ants venturing off the beaten path. When selected, the right-hand panel will confirm that they are indeed explorers.
whereas the ants at the heart of the mainstreams are followers. Let's keep the simulation running to see how this affects the outcome. As before, we suddenly open a passage in the wall. After a few minutes, an explorer discovers the opening and draws an entire group toward it when reaching the stream. From that point on, things move very quickly and the path reinforces itself at a rapid pace. We can see, however, that the initial routes aren't lost, they are still used to distribute traffic. There is a nice alternating pattern between the peripheral routes and the central axis. I really like this emergent behavior from the ants. Now let's see how all of this plays out in a more complex example. We'll reuse the maze from the previous video, but this time there will be two food sources and the environment will be altered over the course of the simulation. After an hour, once the ants have found a path through the maze to reach the food, we open a direct passage to the second source. That should change things quite a bit. The ants quickly find a first shortcut back to the colony, completely abandoning the original path. Soon after, another group discovers the second food source in the bottom right corner. This new flow then connects to the main central route, which leads straight to the colony. Within a few minutes, the ants fully take advantage of the direct path, while still keeping a few secondary routes active, just like before. After two hours, a wall is added right in the middle, cutting off the mainstream entirely.
The clustered ants are quickly drawn into the nearby secondary path and the whole congestion clears up very fast. If you'd like to dive deeper into the topic, feel free to join the Discord server. You can find demos and source code for my projects on my Patreon. Links are in the description. A huge thank you to all the Patreon members for their support and a special thanks to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. <laughs>